And here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, back to try acceptance again. Let us accept things. The absolute bare minimum Penta must make it through the rest of the game. Please don't hold round right trigger. I was playing Spelunky less than 15 minutes ago. Please don't hold round right trigger. This isn't Super Meat Spelunky. There's no such thing as, uh... Oh! Well, I mean that too. There's no such thing as life after death. There's only such thing as dying in video games. But no, there's no such thing as, uh... Running in this game. This isn't Splunky. This isn't Super Meat Boy. This is not SSX Tricky. This is, this is a random third game. I need to, you know, when you when you list stuff off like that, you need three at three <laughs> examples. <laughs> and then the third example. So I just came up with the first game that came to my mind. And honestly, SSX Tricky came to mind. I kind of want to play it now. SSX Three was a really good game. What's your favorite sports game? Let me know in the comments below. If you don't, let me know if. if I expect as many comments as there are views. If you don't, if you watch this video and you don't leave a comment, I'm just gonna remove your ability to leave comments in the future. How will I do that? I don't actually know. I'm gonna have to come up with a method because now I've 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 made my words. But no, let me know. What's your favorite question of the day? I'm gonna bring back question of the video. Question of the day. What's your favorite sports video game? I don't know. It, what is Penta's favorite sports video game? I like, I gotta be honest, NBA 2K12 was like my first NBA 2K game, and I gotta say, I fucking dumped 3,000 hours in that game. 13, not so good. 14, really good, but because 12 was my, fuck, because 12 was my first game I played out of 2K, like, basketball series. I played MLB 2K before then, before they shut it down, I played it. Uh, 2010 and 2012 in that series as well, which is also stellar. I wish I had it, like, I honestly, like, at this point in time, I wish I had a PS4. I really do. Like, there's so many games out now for consoles, and I gotta be honest, if I had a console, well, I do have a console. I have, like, many consoles. But if I had a, if I had a PS4, I say it now, I say, well, dude, if I had a PS4, I'd be playing Bloodborne. I'd be playing this. I'd be playing that. I'd be playing Horizon Zero Dawn. I'd be playing... And they'll be the show, which is the reason that this topic became a thing. Uh, but I know I have a $4,000 PC and 500 games in my Steam library, let alone the ones that I don't have in my Steam library. Like in my GOG library and shit like that. Let alone those games that I'm never going to touch because I own them, I want to play them, but time doesn't exist. And I, I guess... Some of the blame goes on YouTube and Twitch and stuff like that because, well, playing the game for the first time, like you're watching right now, playing a game for the first time with your audience, you guys, is a very sentimental experience for me. I know a lot of people, many of my friends actually, streamers and fellow YouTubers of mine, don't like playing games blind. They like going in knowing things. They like going in knowing the story. They like going in knowing the subject matter and how things work out or they've played them before. I am a blind guy. I am a blind Let's Player, a blind streamer. I like sharing the experience with you guys. It's an intimate experience. It's very sentimental to me. Sharing the first time playthrough with my audience and reading your guys' reactions in the comments makes what I do worth it. Not playing the game, not having fun, not getting salty and, you know, making people giggle when I get pissed. No. Reading when people are like, this was an amazing, on the final episode of like Hollow Knight, saying this was like one of the best journeys I've ever been on. Thank you, Penta, for playing it. I'm glad I could be there for it, or for it and for you. Even if it's seven months later, I'm still getting comments on my last episode of Hollow Knight, or my last episode of Cave Story, my last episode of fucking whatever, you name it. My last episode of the Pokemon streams that I do, like on the VODs of those, and people are like, ooh, this is fucking great. I'm glad I could have been on their journey with you. That shit makes what I do worth it. So back to the root of the thing. I expect you to comment on this video. I expect you to tell me what your damn favorite sports game is. <laughs> because it's... I don't even know anymore. Uh, because reasons. Ew. Because reasons. You know why? That's why. Reasons. 
sooner or later you're gonna have to accept eh, accept that this game is never gonna be over and I'm going to be playing this same level for the next 12 years of my life and so on each video of me playing denial for the 30th 5th millionth time I expect you to answer my damn questions when I ask them because I like you you're a good person you're a genuine fellow. I would buy you a gallon of milk if I saw you in the store and you're like, I need milk, but I don't have the money to buy milk. I'd buy you milk. I'm that guy. So the least you can do is when I ask what your damn favorite sports video game is, you can say it's SS Tricky because it's the right decision. Or Cool Borders, which is also good. I don't know. Cool Borders versus this snowboarding games. Cool Borders, SSX, and 1080 are all like real good. I think 1080 wins though. But then again, like, I think SSX might win. I don't know. I know I really like the MLB and NBA games. Uh, I used to like FIFA a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. I used to sink a lot of time in the, uh, the FIFA, like, my career shit. Because that's the stuff that I like doing in the games. Because I like role-playing games. I like sports. So, by the associated property, I like sports role-playing games. And what those games are in the My Career mode, and like the My Player, or whatever you want to call them, My Career, My Player, or the franchise mode, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they all they all call them something different. Um, those modes are my favorite because I get to basically create myself, except ripped and 20 years old again, and I get to be a professional sports as uh, athlete. <laughs> It's like, you're gonna live the dream. On my MBK, NBK. Excuse me while I uh, refresh my brain. Uh, on my NBK, I said it again. On my NBA 2K12 uh, main character, if you will, my main athlete. Let's go back so long. Who was I drafted by? Who was I drafted by? I was drafted by the Heat. Plus and I. I was drafted by the Heat. And then we... This is actually not even a joke. We went to the finals in our first season, obviously, because 2012 still had uh, the big three. We went to the finals against... We played the, co the conference semifinals against the Clippers. And then we went to the finals and won in five games against the Dallas Mavericks. I was not a starter yet. In my second season at, with the Heat, I be fuck, I became a starter in like my second week because I started like chipping up some numbers and get more minutes and shit. And I became the starter uh, and actually took over for Dwayne Wade. He went on the bench and then eventually like a week or two later got traded. And then like three weeks after that, after I scored my season high and career high in points, rebounds, and steals in one game, I believe it was steals, maybe it was blocks, I'm not sure. Who fuckers traded me to the, traded me to the, 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 uh, was it the Mavericks? It must have been, it was the Mavericks. I played the Mavericks alongside Dirk for like two weeks and then I was traded again to the Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Bucks, which is my home state team. So I was ecstatic that that, that happened to, you know, be convenient. I was like, dude, I'll play for the Bucks. And I spent the next six years of my season with the Bucks, bringing them to the finals five of those six years, winning the tra championship three years in a row. It was good. And then I retired in the Hall of Fame after eight years. And it was great. It was like five billion hours worth of gaming. But you know what? That that fantasy, that fantasy of being that sports star and playing in those games. God, I really I need to re reinstall. Like, I need to really reinstall NBA 2K17 now. Because now I'm like, I want to play some sports ball. Cause, but anyway, it's the same in like FIFA and NHL. Man, I just got to play NHL now too. Because that's like... Gameplay wise, I think NHL is probably the best out of the sports like RPGs, if you will, over like Madden and NBA and MLB and FIFA and all the ones that have like the My Career, My Player franchise modes. I think the most solid gameplay wise is NHL. Like NHL 14, I sunk hundreds of hours in with my player. And you know what the best part of it is? After like 110 hours, I had just gotten into the, the actual NHL. 
The first like 90 hours of my gameplay was in the freaking uh, the, the minor leagues. Because I played like three seasons in the minor leagues before I was even good enough to be drafted and pulled into the freaking major leagues. And I ended up playing for the freaking Carolina Hurricanes and I was like, these guys suck. No wonder I'm in the minor leagues. These guys are terrible. Ah. Anyway. We're not making a whole ton of progress here, guys. You had to expect that. <laughs> you had to expect that. Clicking on this video. 11 minutes and we haven't even made it to anger once. Y'all wanted to know you should try acceptance next time. I got a couple of people who were like, you should try it on stream. And so I was occasion, you know, eventually I was going to, or I was leaning towards doing it on stream. And then, you know, over the past, like, eight hours of my day, people were like, yeah, you should just do it in the next episode. I want to see you try and conquer acceptance. I want to see you try and do it. I know you can do it. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, all right, we'll, we'll, do it in the next, we'll do it in the next video then. Just uh, keep your expectations medium. And because I know some of you already commented, because I know a lot of people on YouTube like to comment before the video's over, for the people that already commented, go down, scroll down, edit that comment. Actually, don't edit that comment, goddammit, because that's going to make it hard on me. Don't edit the comment. Go down to the comment and comment additionally on top of it a new thread in that, com or in that th comment thread. A new comment in that thread. Not only which is your favorite sports game, but if it is one of like the NBA or MLB 2K, or like Madden, or you know, stuff like that. Do you, what mode do you prefer? Do you prefer the like RPG stuff that I like to prefer, or that I prefer, or do you prefer like the My GM, the My Team? Do you like to play the like Ultimate Team, buy cards and build a freaking franchise kind of stuff? My gums are bleeding. I was at a sharp pain in the back of my mouth. Maybe it was my gums. And I started tasting a little bit, a little slight maybe blood. But you know what? We're okay. We're okay. We're not gonna let that stop us. We're not gonna let that stop us. We're not gonna let that stop us in this instance. We have to beat it. We have to beat the, the acceptance. I'll figure it out later. I want you guys to know that we're not going to beat this. I, I just hope you are aware that this is going to be just another episode of me trying to beat it. And maybe next episode we'll actually beat it. Maybe next episode. <sighs> I haven't made it. haven't made it to anger yet in fact I have not I have only made it to the final screen of denial once so in the grand scheme of things we're doing pretty shit we're doing pretty shit but you know what that's what this experience is about guys it's about that blind playthrough it's about that no it's about that blind playthrough to give you guys that authentic reaction experience from me where I basically just lose my mind for a bunch of time and then once I reach like 23 minutes I end the episode and uh you know go in my bathroom and cry myself to sleep curled around my toilet because I know I'm gonna wake up and panic vomit all over everything because I can't beat the level a little too graphic there. that's funny also, I've never even known, I don't even know if panic vomiting is a thing, but now I kind of want it to be. I want that to be like the next Guillermo del Toro movie. Matthew McConaughey stars in Panic Vomiting. A story about a man who's trapped in a basement who vomits on the walls. Ten Oscars. All of them. Every single Oscar. How many Oscars are there? There's Oscar Meyer. There's Oscar the Grouch. There's Oscar Wilde. There's Oscar... I... Why is that room so hard now? 
Damn it, Oscar. Oh no. Guys, I'm so sorry. I can't. My ear itches. That's a fantastic sensation. I'm one of those weirdos that likes to, like... Are you not supposed to? I know you're not supposed to, but... There's something so... Oh, it's just... It's it's basically... It's basically ear sex. Use it putting a Q-tip... Maybe not jamming it in your ear and shoving it... You know, ear raping your freaking eardrum. But, like... Gently maneuvering it around the ear... Like, inner ear and, you know, exterior ear canal. And just, like... Mopping up whatever residue happens to be in there. Dust, lint, small fragments of earwax, whatever it happens to be. It's just a satisfying experience. And it makes not only my dick hard, but it also... We made it, fine here. We made it through here, finally. But also... It's one of those things where, like, the back of your throat starts tickling. You know that sensation? I've never actually died there, so I'm a little disappointed. Does the back of your throat start tickling? It's like almost like you got a cough. And then the sensation just stops. You pull that cottony goodness out of your ear. And if you're a weirdo, you look at it. <laughs> you gotta figure out what you swept up. You're like, what did I find in there? Oh look, it's a clamshell. No, you don't need a clamshell in your ear, but like, you get what I mean. Right? Yeah, you know what I mean. Listen, I have the people that are commenting right now, or like thinking to themselves, or talking to themselves right now, maybe, when I say commenting on these videos in the commentary, I don't mean like commenting physically on the video, I mean just like commenting to yourself. Like as you watch and you're talking to yourself, like, oh my god, I can't believe it either. Commenting to yourself, the people who are sitting here grumbling to themselves, dude, I don't do that, it's bad for your ears. Listen, you've all done it. You are as guilty as I am. You have put a cotton swab in your ear, and you have felt how good it feels. You can be in denial all you want about, ooh, it's bad for you, or I oh, don't do it because it's gonna break my eardrum and I like hearing things. No, I like hearing things. You know what? We all like hearing things, but you know, you know, we all, you know what we like to do? We like sensations like that. We like the sensations like that. Same thing when you put hydroxy, hydrogen peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, cardio rejection. It's like when you put uh, hydrogen peroxide in your ear. You tilt your head to the side. You drizzle a little in there, maybe you, got a, maybe you got a light ear infection, or maybe you're just cleaning them out because, you know, hydrogen peroxide will, like, soften it up and clear it out on its own. It's a chemical reaction. This got dunked on. That's not good. Uh, you, you put it in there. It starts fizzing. It goes a little... And then you breathe in. He tilts your head to the other side. And a small sprudel just just evaporates out of your ear. Not evaporates, evacuates out of your ear. Evaporate would be a totally different situation. That would be another chemical reaction. It evacuates out of your ear and drips down the side of your cheek. And all of a sudden, you feel like a new man. Don't you? Don't you? Don't lie to me. Listen, I'm a human. I'm also a shameless human. I understand how humans behave. I know what we do. I know what we find pleasure in. The generic pleasure, of course. Some people like their balls being stomped on. Not me, but generic pleasure. Like clipping a toenail, or scratching the bottom of your foot, or, or the best one, detachable shower heads. All right, listen, detachable shower head. If you have a detachable shower head and you're a male, I know you've done this. You can't lie to me. There's, no, there's nothing you can say that makes me believe that you didn't ever do this, because I know how the male psyche works. Take the detachable shower head, hot water, middle of winter, like it is now. You, know, you wash up, you wash your bits, you wash your armpits, you clean up your legs, you wash your beard, you wash up a little bit, you die, and the end is nigh. And then you take the detachable shower head, and you just aim it straight at your taint. Like you just go sweep it right down in there. And that hot water hits it. And especially after like a hot sweaty day and you got that little little build up of sweat down there you build up a like grunge I don't know what you'd call it <laughs> grunge is a genre of music but you know what I mean you get that like that after day residue I'll call it it sounds gross but you know what it's just a human it's human it's the human body deal with it you pansies you put it down there 
And like, I've got one of those massage shower heads that just spackles my freaking skin. And it feels... Maybe not like the sensation of, like, sexual sensation, just a pleasurable sensation. It feels like my skin is becoming butter. And it's a good feeling of becoming butter. Because I don't think there is a bad feeling of becoming butter. Brings me to another topic that I don't think we have time to discuss. That might actually be a better topic for a stream at some point. I might talk to a Mr. Alexa kid about... Yeah, we're gonna talk that about him. I'll leave you guys on that cliffhanger. I'm not gonna bring that up, and you're gonna get bothered by what is he gonna talk about. I guess you'll just have to go over to the twitch.tv slash pentahybrid and twitch.tv slash alexakid. Follow us both there and check out when we stream live, and you might be able to hear that conversation live. And I will make sure to point it out if it's that conversation. I'll make sure. I'll be on the stream and I'll be like, Hey, you, you're gonna talk about uh, this. And I'll be like, it was on the End is Nigh episode uh, 19 that I brought it up and we're gonna talk about it. So be sure, be sure to do those things. To get the, the, the in the boozy of what I wanted to, you know what? I'm so mad. This is the last try. This is it. This is all it is. This is all you're gonna get for this episode. This is it. This is the last life. Watch me beat it now. Watch me beat it now that I've said that. It's that YouTuber clutch. Come on! Nope, nope. Don't speak in tongues, Penta. It's not that stressful. My nose itches, though. That's... No! Oh, the save. The save. He's a genius madman. My nose itches so bad. I got it. I got it. We're good. The nose itch has been satiated. Sated? Not satiated. Sated. I think they both function right, right? Satiated and sated and satiated both work. Yeah, they both work. I believe. I'm gonna second guess myself the whole rest of the video. Do they both work? Am I an idiot? I've only made it to anger twice this entire time. Oh my god! <gasps>